Welcome back. In this module, we are going to look to the Will Architected Framework and the Amazon Web Services Will Architected Framework. Then we will look to the best practices for building solutions on AWS and the AWS Global Infrastructure. By the end of this course, you will have learned about all component in the AWS architecture, and this will enable you to build a similar architecture showing here in the example. You should also be able to construct your own solution architectures that are as large and robust as this example. You will see this diagram repeated at the start of most modules in this course and lesson. A new component in this diagram will be revealed as they are introduced in the course. So what is cloud architecting? Cloud architecture is the practice of applying cloud characteristics to a solution that uses the cloud services and features to meet an organizational, technical needs, and business requirements. A solution is similar to a blueprint for a building. Software system require architect to manage their size and complexity. The cloud architect engage with decision makers to identify the business goals and the capabilities that need improvement. Ensure alignment between technology deliverables of a solution and the business goals. Work with the delivery teams that are implementing the solution to ensure that the technology features are appropriate. The AWS Will Architected Framework is designed to help you to build the most secure, high-performing, resilient, and efficient infrastructure. It provides a constant approach to evaluate cloud architectures and guidance to help implement designs. It documents a set of foundational questions and best practices that enable you to understand if a specific architecture aligns well with the cloud best practices. AWS developed this framework after reviewing thousands of customer architectures on AWS. The five pillars of the Will Architected Framework are operational excellence, security, reliability, performance, efficiency, and cost optimization. In the security pillar, we address the ability to protect information, systems, and assets while delivering business value through risk assessment and mitigation strategies. Your architecture will present a much stronger security presence if you implement a strong identity foundation and enable traceability via cloud trial and apply security at all layers. Then you want to automate the security best practices and protect the data in transit and at rest. In the operational excellence pillar, we want to look to the ability to run and monitor the system via, for example, CloudWatch. And we want also to continuously improve supporting processes and procedures. In the reliability pillar, we want to recover quickly from infrastructure or service disruption, and we can be able to dynamically acquire computing resources to meet the demand. Then we should have a mitigation disruptions such as misconfigurations and transit network issues. In the performance efficiency pillar, we want to choose efficient resources and maintain their efficiency as demand changes, and we want to employ and implement advanced technologies, and we want to also employ mechanical sympathy. In the cost optimization, we want to measure the efficiency of our system and software and eliminate unneeded expense. We want to consider using managed service over self-managed service. If you would like help with designing a well-architected solution, you can use the well-architected tool. The AWS Architected Tool is a self-service tool that provides you with an on-demand access to current AWS best practices. These best practices can help you to build secure, high-performing, resilient, and efficient application infrastructure on AWS. The AWS Well-Architected Tool helps you to review the state of your workload and compare them to the latest AWS Architected service to practice. You have access to the tool via the management console and you can define your workload and you can answer a series of questions in the area of operational excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency, and cost optimization. So what are the best practices for building solutions on AWS? As you design a solution, think carefully about the trade-offs so that you can select an optimal approach. For example, you might trade consistency, durability, and the space for time and latency 
to deliver higher performance. Or you might prioritize the speed uh, to market over cost. Trade-offs can increase the cost and complexity of your architecture. So your design decision should be based on empirical data. You might need to perform load testing to ensure that a measurable benefit is obtained in the performance. Or you might need to perform benchmarking to achieve the most cost optimal workload over time. When you evaluate performance related improvements, you will also want to consider how your architecture design choices will impact customer and workload efficiency. When you run your workload in the AWS cloud, you can scale your infrastructure quickly and dynamically using an auto scaler. This will make sure that you implement the scalability at every layer of your infrastructure. In the scenario that we can see here, when application server reach full capacity, users are prevented from accessing the application. In this case, in the anti-pattern, the administrator must manually launch a new server to meet those demand. This might take a few minutes for an instance to become available for use after its launch, which can increase the time that user cannot access the application. By enabling auto scaling, you can improve your design to anticipate the need for more capacity and deliver it before it is too late. AWS offers built-in monitoring and automation tool at virtually every layer of your infrastructure. Take advantage of these tools to ensure that your infrastructure can respond quickly to changes. You can also use those tools like CloudWatch and Amazon EC2 Auto Scaling to detect unhealthy resources and automate the launch of replacement resources. You can also be notified when resources and locations changes. The best practices of treating resources as a disposal refers to the idea of thinking about your infrastructure as software instead of hardware. With hardware, it is easy to buy more specific components that you need. So with hardware, it is easy to buy more specific components that you need so that you are prepared for spikes in usage. That is expensive and inflexible. It is harder to upgrade because of the cost. When you treat your resources as disposal, migrating between instances or other discrete resources is fairly straightforward. You can quickly respond to changes in capacity needs, upgrade applications, and manage the underlying software. Traditional infrastructure have chains of tightly integrated server, each with a specific purpose. The problem is that when one of these component or layers goes down, the disruption to the system can be fatal. It also make the scaling very difficult. If you add or remove servers at one layer, you must also connect every server on each connecting layer. So the example in the left demonstrate a collection of web and application server. As you can see, if one of the application server goes down, the tightly coupled web server will be also down, which means you won't be able to fix only the application, but you have also to fix and maintain and configure both the application server and the web server. With loose coupling, you can use managed solution as a load balancer between the application and the web layer. And in this case, you can change all these unhealthy instances by a healthy application server and this is will not affect the performance of your web server. The next best practice is design services not servers. Although Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud offers tremendous flexibility for designing setting up your solution it shouldn't always be the first option. There is many other choices like containers or serverless solution which can be more appropriate to your application. With AWS serverless solution and managed services, you don't need to provision, configure and manage an entire Amazon EC2 instances and with managed solution that have a lower profile and are more performance can replace server-based solutions at a lower cost. We will describe a few examples of AWS Lambda and AWS Simple Queuing Service SQS and Amazon DynamoDB and the Elastic Load Balancing and also we'll look to the Amazon Simple Email Service and Amazon Cognito. Choosing the right database solution is very important for your application. In its traditional data centers and on-premises environments, limits on available hardware and licensing can constrain your choice of a data store solution. AWS 
recommends that you choose a data store based on your needs for your application environment. Where possible, eliminate single point of failure from your architecture. This does not mean that you must always duplicate every component depending on your downtime service level agreement. You can use an automated solution that only launch the component when needed. A common way to avoid single points of failure is to create a secondary standby database server and replicate the data in a synchronous method. This way, if the main database server goes offline, the secondary server can pick up the load. Cloud computing allows you to trade capital expense for variable expenses. Caching is a technique to make future requests faster and reduce network throughput by temporarily storing data in an intermediary location between the requester and the permanent storage. In the anti-pattern example, no caching service is used when anyone requests a file from one of the Amazon Simple Storage Services, S3 buckets, each request takes the same amount of time to complete and each request cost the same. In the best practice pattern in the infrastructure, we use Amazon Cloud Front in front of Amazon S3 to provide caching. In this scenario, the initial request checks for a file in Amazon Cloud Front. If it is not found, Cloud Front requests the file from Amazon S3 and then Cloud Front stores a copy of the file at an edge location close to the user and sends a copy to the user who made the request. Subsequent requests for the file are retrieved from from the now closer edge location to the user. This reduces latency and cost because after the first request, you no longer pay for the file to be transformed out of Amazon S3. Security is not only about getting through the outer boundary of your infrastructure, it is also involves ensuring that your individual environments and their component are secured from each other. For example, in Amazon EC2, you can create security groups that allow you to determine which port in your instance can send and receive the traffic. Now let us look to the AWS Global Infrastructure. The AWS Global Infrastructure is built around region. A region represents a physical geographical location with one or more availability zone. An availability zone is basically a logical isolation of the AWS cloud. Communication between regions use AWS Backbone Network Infrastructure. You can enable and control data replication across regions. An availability zone or each availability zone is made up of one or more data center designed for fault isolation, interconnected with other availability zone in a region using a high-speed private link. For certain services, you can choose your availability zone and AWS recommends replicating your data across multiple availability zone for data resilience. There is also AWS local zone, which enable you to run latency sensitive portion of applications closer to end users and resources in a specific geography. Are an extension of an Amazon AWS region where you can use AWS services in a geographic proximity to end user. This will let you place AWS compute, storage, database, and other select services closer to a large population, industry, and IT center. Those local zones are managed and supported by AWS. Currently, only we have Los Angeles AWS local zone, which available by invitation. AWS data center are where the data resides and data processing happened. A data center typically has tens of thousands of servers. All data center are online and serving customer. AWS custom network equipment are stored in those data center. To deliver content to end user with low latency, Amazon Cloud Front uses a global network that includes over 200 point of presence that are compromised of edge locations and regional edge caches. Edge locations are located in North America, Europe, Asia, Australia, South America, and Middle East, Africa, and China. Those edge locations support AWS services like Amazon Route 53 and Amazon Cloud Front. Regional edge caches are used by default with Amazon Cloud Front. They are used when we have content that is not accessed frequently enough to remain in an edge cache. Regional edge caches absorb these content and provide an alternative to fetching the content from the origin server. In this module, we learned how to define a cloud architecture, describe how to design and evaluate architectures using the Will Architect, the framework, explain the best practices for building solutions on AWS, 
Describe how to make informed decision on where to place AWS resources. There is additional resources if you want to learn more about the Will Architecture Framework that you can visit the AWS Global Infrastructure and the AWS Will Architecture Framework wide paper. Thank you for seeing this video and see you in the next one.